My name is Dr. Shaukat Bashir. I am the Chief of Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology here at the Doctors Community Hospital. A gastroenterologist is a subspecialist in the, in the division of medicine who specializes in care of digestive diseases. So digestive diseases are encompasses a lot of diseases including acid reflux, heartburn, ulcer disease, patients who have abdominal pain, you know, patients who have colon disorders like change in bowel habits, diarrhea, constipation, bleeding from the rectum or bleeding from the mouth and some often it also encompasses diseases of the liver including hepatitis and diseases of the pancreas as well. So a gastroenterologist commonly per performs a procedure called endoscopy. Now this endoscopy can be upper endoscopy or lower endoscopy which is also called colonoscopy. Upper end, these are what basically a gastroenterologist does. It, it, it's a long tube with the camera in front and then it goes into the patient's stomach once they are sedated and look inside the stomach to look for ulcers or any abnormalities or any infection. And then in, during a colonoscopy, a similar long tube with the camera in front is passed into the rectum and look and in, evaluate the inside of the colon to look for any abnormalities. So most endoscopists, most gastroenterologists will perform upper endoscopy and colonoscopy. But here at Digestive Disease Center of Doctors Community Hospital, we are also offering specialized endoscopy, which is for evaluation of patients with cancer of the pancreas, cancer of the stomach, or cancer of the rectum. A colon is the last part of the gastrointestinal tract. It's about five to six feet long. It's a hollow organ. And the main function of the colon is to absorb the water uh, and storage of the stool. The polyps are silent growths inside the colon, which are important because if they are left alone, some of them can potentially grow slowly and turn into cancer. Not all polyps are cancerous, but some of them can turn into cancer. It's very important to know them, and also it's important to know because they don't cause any symptoms, but they can cause problems for the patient down the road. Colon cancer is, it's usually a big growth which can develop inside of the colon and cause problems like blockage, bleeding, and problems. It is a growth which can spread to the rest of the parts of the body. Uh, and usually 95% of the colon cancer arises from these silent growths called polyps. The main risk factor for colon cancer is advanced age. As we get older, uh, our risk of colon cancer goes high. Then patients usually more than 50 are at higher risk than a younger person. Patients who have family history of colon cancer, a person who has a mother or a brother or a sister with colon cancer have a higher risk of developing colon cancer. Then there is another group of patients who are at higher risk for colon cancer are patients who have some hereditary problems, like they have genetic abnormalities and they can develop lots and lots of polyps in the colon and then can develop cancer as well. And those patients tend to be in a younger age, less than 50. Unfortunately, if the colon cancer is early stage, usually there are no symptoms, that's why patients may not present early. But once the patient develops a full-blown colon cancer and a big mass in the colon, they can present with abdominal pain, blood in the stool, change in their bowel habits, they may notice constipation, it, they may develop diarrhea, and they may also have weight loss and they may lose their appetite, especially when there are advanced cases. The 
average lifetime risk of colon cancer in anybody in a person who is has no family history is around 6% lifetime. Now, if somebody has a family history, that means if their first degree relative, mother, brother, or sister has colon cancer, the risk goes up to 12%. Now, if somebody has a second degree relative, that means their aunt or paternal grandparent has colon cancer, the risk is around 8 to 9% lifetime. So in the United States, the colon cancer, the new colon cancer cases per year are died, deaths are around 50,000. And the new cases diagnosed annually of colon cancer in this country are around 140,000. The most accurate method of diagnosing colon cancer is to do a colonoscopy. As I mentioned, it is a procedure where the patient is sedated and a long tube with a camera is inserted into the rectum and the entire colon is examined. It will give us an idea if there is a growth in the inside the colon uh, and we can take a biopsy at the same time. There are some other ways of diagnosing colon cancer, especially in the early stages wherein we can do stool is sent for testing for any blood products because the cancers can bleed intermittently we send the stool specimen for blood testing if it comes back positive then we do a colonoscopy and other tests like some stool genetic testing and some additional stool tests may be required depending upon what stage the colon cancer is but those are generally reserved for early colon cancers Colonoscopy is important because it prevents colon cancer deaths. Not only it, we can detect colon cancer in the early stage, but we can prevent colon cancer. As I mentioned that some polyps can turn into cancer, so by doing colonoscopy and removing these polyps, we actually prevent colon cancer down the road. So not only we can prevent deaths, but we can prevent colon cancer completely. Now, if somebody has colon cancer and we do colonoscopy, the advantage of doing colonoscopy at a early stage is we can pick up early colon cancers and give the, get the treatment done, which completely cures the cancer. So colonoscopy has really made a remarkable difference over the past three to four decades in the deaths of colon cancer. We have been able to reduce the mortality from colon cancer because of the colonoscopy. Colonoscopy preparation involves generally three to five days before the colonoscopy. A person generally does not eat a high fiber diet. He stays away from nuts and seeds and raw vegetables. Then the day before he is advised to stay on a clear liquid diet. By a clear liquid diet means that a liquid through which you can see. It's a see-through liquid, so that will include uh, broth, popsicle, jello, not red jello, because red can be confused with blood, and you can have apple juice, you can have grape juice. So anything which is clear liquid, you can have the day before. Then day before also, the doctor is going to advise you to take a gallon of laxative liquid or some other colon prepar colonoscopy preparation and by drinking that laxative, you are cleansing out the colon so that the doctor can completely visualize the entire length of the colon. On the day of the colonoscopy, most patients will come in and they will get evaluated by the nurse and the vital signs are taken and then they will, again a brief history and physical examination will be done and then a person will get a, a IV placed and given some IV fluids. And after that, the patient will be taken into the procedure room and sedation will be administered. The sedation is gentle medications used by anesthesiologist or by your endoscopist, wherein they inject some medications through your IV, which was placed outside. And once you are sedated enough, the doctor will replace a colonoscope 
throw the rectum and examine the colon. Typically, the procedure takes about 15 to 20 minutes and most people are sedated throughout the procedure. And then after that procedure, you are sent to a recovery room where you will be monitored for another 30 to 40 minutes and discharged home. Day after the colonoscopy, majority of the patients have no problems. They can resume their normal activities with no restrictions at all. The main important thing when you are looking at a center for colonoscopy is to make sure that they have experienced physicians. And number two is they need to have good quality majors. A digestive disease center here, we major quality of all our procedures and we want to make sure that all quality, national quality majors are met. And you should look at something called adenoma detection rate, means that the doctor who is performing the procedure has met the quality major, which is how many polyps a gastroenterologist picks up in 100 patients. If that number is less than 30%, that means the gastroenterologist has to improve his efficacy, has to improve his diagnosis of these polyps because the national standard is more than 30%, especially in men. Well, here at the Digestive Disease Center with the Doctors Community Hospital, we have started a program where we see patients both first in the outpatient office and then we do procedures. For patients' safety and patients' ease, we, have, we do these procedures at an outpatient facility center and also at the Doctors Community Hospital. Uh, we offer uh, consultations, we also offer these procedures. In addition, we also offer procedures for our advanced patients with cancers of the colon, cancers of the pancreas, cancers of the esophagus or stomach. We do a procedure what is called endoscopic ultrasound, which is a specialized procedure wherein I will basically place a specialized endoscope into the stomach or into the colon and look for the staging of the pancreatic stomach or esophageal cancer and also rectal cancer. That gives their treating oncologist or a cancer specialist a much more better idea of how to treat those patients. It also, this technology is also helpful in getting a biopsy from tumors which are deep inside the pancreas or deep inside the wall of the stomach. So that is a, a, a endoscopy technique we have here at the doctor's hospital, which the community, rest of the community does not at present. Yes, there are. There is a program labeled as CPEST, which is Cancer Prevention, Education, Screening and Treatment Program, where in the state of Maryland, we are participating in this program and we are offering free colonoscopy screenings to uninsured patients and people who cannot afford it. This is a ways of reducing, not only making the community aware about this program, but also uh, uh, to reduce the mortality from colon cancer. And I'm proud to say that we at a doctor's community hospital performed more than 200 such colonoscopies during last year.